What stands out as the most one memorable event from Wheatland? Yeah, Pin down yeah. any one thing <laughs> that makes that stands out. One thing that stands out is uh, I think it was 1977 when uh, Martin Bogan and Armstrong were on the stage. It was probably Saturday night. They had done a couple of encores, and people didn't want them to leave. And uh, they kept saying, you know, we gotta go, we gotta go, and he said, uh, pointed to the east and the full moon was rising over the woods on the east side of the farm there. And he said, we gotta go. Uh, Moon is coming up and more stars have got to shine. <laughs> Let everybody else come up and take their turn on the stage too. Never forget that. Carl's those two of those guys are gone, but Howard Armstrong was here this weekend. He was in that bunch that was here twelve years ago or thirteen years ago. What's one of the toughest things putting this whole thing together? The uh, toughest thing is getting the volunteers to understand what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Volunteer orientation meetings are things we tried to have a long time ago. We haven't had good ones in a long time. We dealt with it this year on, on a crew leader uh, level. We've had meetings with some crew leaders and things have been working out a lot better. They had a lot more things written down to give to the volunteers explain their jobs. A lot of the different areas have handouts. And before they never had anything like that. Mm -hmm. and they really would go out there to do their job and they weren't really sure what to do if something happened. Uh, they had a hard time dealing with it. Everything would break down at that point. <laughs> Where do most of the volunteers come from? Around the area or just all over? No, I mean all over Michigan. We have volunteers from the Upper Peninsula, and Kalamazoo, and Ann Arbor. The festival used to be small. Is it going to get too big someday? Boy, it seems like the uh, last couple years it you know, kind of got, when the farm it gets so packed as it is now, you 
have to start thinking, uh -oh, what did we do? What did we do wrong and what can we do? We certainly don't want to stop doing it, you know. Uh, luckily we got good neighbors. You know, we're using we're using the neighbor's farm, but um, it'd be something if we promoted this thing, it would really be swamped. And we don't promote it and we're swamped, so what are you gonna do? I don't know, you know. You're gonna have to start turning people away. <laughs> that's you know, that's people have been talking about that for years as a possibility, but you know, we can't fence the whole farm in, you know, you, there's certain levels of, since the beginning, yeah, we were, uh, we, there still is a free concert committee in Big Rapids, and we used to, I used to help with that outfit, and there was one in Mount Pleasant, too, I don't think the one in Mount Pleasant is still surviving, but uh, that's what kind of got us into putting on concerts we had a little bit of sound gear and we just drove once once a month we go to big rapids once a month we go to mount pleasant and calling bands to come and play and stuff we did that for a couple three or four years and uh, we're working for the mount pleasant food co-op first you know i told you that the first why did you do that the first festival in 74 was a just a one day event to raise money for the food co-op yeah, they were telling us what we were doing. Yeah, and a lot. And we had better turnout than we expected. And thought, hmm. That was in August of 74. And in October of 75, or maybe the spring of 75, we kind of stopped working for the food co-op and incorporated as Wheatland mm -hmm. to start planning another festival. Um, over the years, it's changed a lot. What's your favorite change, and what's your least favorite change? Well, I'm not real happy with the growth uh, the last couple of years. You know, all these extra people, and it, it's really, we haven't, you know, we probably should have figured for this growth, this big spurt, there might be 2,000 more people here than there was last year, and there was 2,000 more people last year than we figured on the other. So that's the tricky, you know, you're talking about that question you asked before. That's a hard thing to figure out how to handle that, you know. So that's, in a way, it's kind of a negative thing for me. The positive things are just the family aspect of things, more things for the kids on uh, Kids Hill and, uh, and more volunteers and you know, better organization along, along that line most positive thing is just the way people feel about it. You know? mm -hmm. Everybody feels pretty good about it. Helping Wheatland, if they can do anything, they'll drive. You know, the People that were here last weekend, Labor Day weekend, so the extra day there for them, and it, was, it worked out good for them because they always look for a reason to come up here uh, when there's not 20,000 people to uh, crowd around. And so they, people like coming here, that's the feeling. If you met someone that never heard about Wheatland before, what would you tell them? How would you explain it to the students? Well, I always use the term uh, like non-commercial uh, folk music or uh, you know, the arts and crafts stuff and, and the music and the dancing. It's all stuff you don't find, you know, on your general sort of you know, on the AM and FM radio you don't get much of that FM you know a little bit but you're not going to see much of these bands on TV there is a little you know if you got cable TV you can catch a little bit of it but it's the stuff you know that people do at home some of these bands are professional and they're on the road all the time but most of them aren't most of them have day jobs and they play music every night at home instead of watching TV and stuff you gotta come here and and well Another real big positive thing is that, the, that so many people have, uh, through through their attendance at the festival, they have they have picked up on these hobbies and crafts, and, and they started playing music or, or dancing. They do these things when they go home. They come here and it's a big celebration, but a lot of them go home and and live this stuff. It's a daily, you know, it's part of their lives. Mm -hmm. 
I think for a lot of them, they would they would tell you that it wasn't until they came here. So, tell somebody that's never been here before. You know, kind of prepare yourself for a heavy dose of uh, things to do instead of watching TV. Mm -hmm. um, so earlier. You, so you think it's changed a lot of people's lives that have attended? People from the camping gear. You could go any place in the woods, you know, in the camps. And they'll say, this is the tent we bought to come to Wheatland. This is our sleeping bag for Wheatland. This is our cook stove. I've sat with people and had, had them tell me this. You know. <laughs> they, had, uh, they upgrade their camping materials and, you know, uh, one year to the next, you know, they get a better air mattress or something so they're more comfortable because they're getting older. And, uh, you know, it's a big event they look forward to. And, you know, some people go to festivals all the time. A lot of them don't. A lot of them, this is their only thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're only vacation costs and they want to. Uh, uh. It's our only vacation this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were talking earlier, you know, previously when you talked about um, all the art. The, the, it's a juried art show, and there the people over there are carefully selected, just as we select the bands and the dance groups. It's a hard, people say there's not a lot of turnover down there, you kind of the same booths all the time. A lot of, there's a lot of people who do that, but a lot of them might not get to events quite like this, and, or they don't like to eat so much dirt or something. You know? but we get a lot of requests, people who, you know, obviously just, you know, go to a craft store and buy a bunch of stuff and then assemble kind of thing and caught, you know, homemade, handcrafted stuff, you know. And, uh, it's just like playing music at home with your family and singing songs. That's the homemade craft aspect of that. It's got to be the same way with uh, the people over in the jury guard. They gotta, they gotta really do it the traditional way. The short story there, the first one was just that one, and I don't know how many hundreds of people came, but expected, you know, a couple hundred, and we had 500 people come to that. Uh, we didn't have light, the show basically got done in the dark. Lives here, Mark Wynette was at that one, and he, later on, 